What I'm now going to show you is how to provision a MySQL HeatWave instance in AWS, what is the latency of accessing the service within AWS, and how can you efficiently move data, which is stored in Aurora or RDS instance, to MySQL HeatWave. So to start off with, users need to go to cloud.mysql.com. So I'm going to start with cloud.mysql.com. I'll enter my credentials, and I come to this landing page, and from here, I can provision the instance I can run queries, I can monitor the performance of the system, I can run machine learning, right? So all these capabilities are possible directly from the console. To start off with, we're going to create a MySQL HeatWave instance. So I'm going to enter the various information necessary to create a MySQL database. Like we're going to go with the latest version of MySQL. Now, one of the things I'm going to specify over here is the availability zone. So I have the opportunity to specify which availability zone. So we're going to pick US East AZ1. And then we will add into the information required to create the HeatWave cluster. So we're going to go with the larger shape of HeatWave, and we're going to provision a four-node HeatWave cluster. Once this is done, the HeatWave instance is created inside AWS. So when we look at the information and the details, we see that the HeatWave cluster was created, the MySQL instance was created in AZ1. So MySQL HeatWave is running inside AWS. Now, one of the things we'd like to do is to see that what is the latency of accessing this MySQL HeatWave instance which we just created. So for this, I've created a compute instance in the same AZ, and we're going to check the latency for accessing the MySQL database. We see that it takes 0.4 milliseconds. So what this means is that for many of the database applications which are very really latency sensitive, this is a very good solution. The next thing we're going to do is I have an instance of RDS where in the same AZ where we have a bunch of data, and we're going to use the data migration service to move data from RDS MySQL to MySQL HeatWave, which we just created. Right? So the data, is, the data is going to be replicated from the RDS instance to HeatWave using DMS service. Now, the first thing we observe is that the DMS also is created in the same AZ, AZ1. So our, the um, RDS instance, the DMS, and MySQL HeatWave, they are all in the same AZ, so there is no data egress which is happening to the internet. We start the replication. The data is now being moved from RDS into the MySQL database, and all the tables which are in RDS will start getting populated to the MySQL database. Once the tables appear on the MySQL side, using the same autopilot, we can load the tables from the MySQL database into the HeatWave memory. So now I have the tables on the MySQL side, and I'm going to use Autopilot to load them into HeatWave. And now the system is ready to query MySQL HeatWave. So what we just did is that we replicated data from RDS to MySQL HeatWave, so customers can now get all the benefits of MySQL HeatWave, which is better performance and a lot of these capabilities. And all of this was happening while the data remained inside AZ1, inside the same availability zone, so there was no egress to the internet. So what I've just shown you is as to how easy it is to create a MySQL HeatWave instance in AWS. The latency of accessing this is very low, and there is no data egress to the internet. Thank you.